This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create these interlocking rings using Inkscape and at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen over here to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll go ahead and close out of that and we'll get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is go to View. Uh, we'll set that to Custom and then we'll zoom in at 100% and then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button right here. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from that drop-down. And then we will open up our Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're going to do is create an oval. So come over here to the, um, the uh, Create Circles and Ellipses tool and let's click on that. And let's come over to the canvas and just click and drag on the canvas to create an oval. Uh, it could be any size like that. <clears throat> Then we'll go back to our Select tool, and up here where it says W, we're going to change the width. Highlight all of this, and then type in uh, 350, so hit 350, and then press Tab on your keyboard to skip over to the height, where this is right here, the H, it says Height. We're going to change the height to 225, and then hit Enter. And then what we'll do is, let's take the opacity of this and drop that down about in half. And after we've done that, we'll right-click this, and go to Duplicate, and we will turn that duplicated copy red. And then we could hold control on the keyboard and click and drag it up about, maybe about that high. And then we'll right click that and go to duplicate. And we'll turn that copy blue. And then let's hold control and shift in the keyboard and click and drag one of these arrows to scale this in about that much. And then afterwards, we can go to our Bezier pen. Let's click on that. And then we'll turn on the Snap to Paths tool. And we're going to want to snap the cursor to the very far left edge of this bottom oval right here. So once it snaps onto there, go ahead and click. And then hold Control on the keyboard and bring your cursor up. Drag that line up until it snaps onto the, to the bottom of uh, the left edge of this red oval. And then click. Still holding Control the whole time we're doing this. Drag this line over to the right until it snaps. And then click. And then bring this down until it snaps. And then click. And we can let go of control and connect this back to the starting point. And then what we can do is, let's go back to our select tool. And let's hold shift in the keyboard and click on this black oval on the bottom. And let's go to path, union. So we unify those together. And then we'll click on this red oval right here. And let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black shape beneath it. And go to path, difference. And then we could right click this and go to duplicate. We could turn that green and let's flip that vertically by going up here to this key that says flip selected objects vertically. Go ahead and click that and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the blue oval and let's align the top edges. So go ahead and click this button right here, align top edges and then hold shift and click on the green object so it deselects it and we just have the blue one selected and then we can right click on that blue object and go to duplicate and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the green object and go to path intersection <clears throat> so what we'll do now is let's click on this blue object right here and then hold shift and click on the red object beneath it and we'll go to path difference so now we have the shape and structure of our ring. So what we're going to do now is let's click and drag over this whole thing. And let's bring the opacity of that all the way up. And let's make this a gold, a gold color. I'm going, to, I'm going to use this color right here. And then I'll come over to the HSL tab under the Fill tab. And I'll go to the L column. And I'll slide this over to the left a little bit just to, just to darken it a little bit. Maybe about that much. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Then let's click on just this bottom portion of the ring right here. Click on that to select it. And we're going to give that a linear gradient by coming to this button right here that says linear gradient. Go ahead and click that. And then we'll go to our gradient tool, which is right here. If you don't have this on your screen, probably if you're using a laptop, that, that, that key won't be there. So you could just press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And there we have it. So let's come over to this node on the right over here and let's click on that. And let's turn off our snap to paths. We don't need that right now. 
So let's click on this node right here. And when you click on it, this little dialog should show up here in this box if you're under the fill tab. And once we get that, let's bring the opacity of that all the way up. And then let's take this L column under the HSL tab. Let's take this L column and slide this to the right a little bit. Maybe about that much. And that's pretty good right there. And then we'll click on this uh, little ring here. That's supposed to be the rim of the ring. And we'll give that a linear gradient as well. But instead of creating a gradient for it, we'll just go back to the gradient we used before. There should be a drop down right here. Go ahead and click on that. And there's our linear gradient that we just created. So go ahead and click on that. <clears throat> and what we're going to do now is we're going to swap this thing around. So we're going to take this node right here and let's click and drag this to the left. And then take this node right here and click and drag that to the right. And I'm actually going to hold control on the keyboard so that line goes straight horizontally. Kind of like that. And then let's click on this piece right here. Actually, let's go to the select tool and then let's click on this. And we'll come over here to the L column and let's darken that up a little bit by sliding it to the right. Maybe about that much. And then we'll give that a linear gradient as well, but we're going to use, we're going to create another new one. So go ahead and click linear gradient. And we'll go back to our gradient tool. If you don't have the key, again, you just press G on the keyboard to get it. And let's click on this one right here, the one on the right. And let's bring the opacity of that all the way up. If that doesn't work, you could also go to the A column and just drag that up as well. It does the same thing. And then we'll go to the L column and slide this to the right just to darken that up a little bit. And that should work pretty well like that. So the next thing we're going to do is let's go, let's go to our uh, Create Squares and Rectangles tool and click on that. And let's click and drag over this thing and create a rectangle like that. Well, for some reason it didn't. You know what? Before you do that, we were just on the gradient tool like this. Before you leave this, let's click on the, the select tool for, first and click off of the graphic to deselect it. Otherwise, it, it didn't really work the way I intended it to. And then we can go back to our rectangle tool. And then let's just click and drag over this thing right here and create a rectangle. Uh, it's coming up at zero opacity for some reason. I'm just going to bring that up. I'm actually going to leave that in half. I'm going to make the opacity of that about in half. And then we'll go back to the select tool. And I'm going to make this a little thinner. I don't want it quite that big. And I'm going to put this right here. What I'm looking at here when I'm placing this rectangle is this bottom segment right here. I'm placing it over the left end right here. And then I'm going to right click this red copy and go to duplicate and hold control and click and drag this off to the right. And then let go of control and take this side arrow right here and just bring that in a little bit. Maybe about that much. And then hold shift on the keyboard and click on the first red object and go to path union. Then we could right click this, go to duplicate and put this copy over here. And what I'm looking at here is this, this piece right here. I'm going to place that over the right side of that, right about there. And then we'll take this bottom piece down here. Let's right click that and go to duplicate. Hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red objects and go to path intersection. And we could turn that white and we could just adjust the opacity accordingly. I think maybe, maybe about that much. I'd say that looks pretty good. And then we can click on this darker piece right here. Let's right click that and go to duplicate. Hold shift on the keyboard and click on those, that, those red pieces right there and go to path intersection. And then I'm going to turn that black and I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit, maybe about that much. That's pretty good like that. And what I'll do now is I'll click and drag over this whole thing and I'm going to group it together by clicking this button up here, group together, group selected objects. And then I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate and hold control and click and drag this off to the left. And then I'm going to flip this vertically and then flip it horizontally. And then I'm going to click this a second time to get the scale, uh, the rotation handles and hold control on the keyboard and grab this arrow on the top right. And we're going to bring that down two steps. So let's click and drag and go one, two, two steps, just like that. And then we'll click on this one right here, the original ring, 
We'll click that a second time to get the scaling handles, the rotation handles rather. Hold control on the keyboard and we're gonna grab this bottom right corner and rotate it up three steps. So let's click and drag this one, two, three. And then what we could do is we could take this ring and click and drag and, and bring this over to about here. So it's positioned right about here. You want to make sure you have a little bit of white space in there between the two intersections of the rings. You don't want to put it like this where there's no white space in there. We're going to need a little bit of white space right there. So maybe, maybe I'll put that right there just like that. And then I'm going to ungroup this. Let's click on the button that says ungroup selected objects. And then click on this ring to the right right here. And let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's ungroup that. And then go to path union. And then I'll turn that red and bring the opacity down a little bit just so I could differentiate it from the rest of the graphic. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to grab the magnifying glass and just click and drag over this portion right here to zoom in. And then we'll get the Bezier pen again. And I'm going to start this line in the center here. So I'm going to come to this white space in the middle here and click and bring this line down here right about there and click. Come out here click, come out here to this side, and click, and then bring it back to the starting point. So basically what I've done there was I, I drew a shape going around this portion of the red ring, the portion of the red ring where it intersects with the, the ring on the left. So that's the, that's the piece I'm looking at there that I'm trying to grab. So once we've done that, we can go back to the select tool, and we could hold shift in the keyboard and click on that red ring and go to path intersection. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. And then I'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on this lighter part of the ring right here, the little rim, and then go to path difference. And then I'll grab this original red shape, hold shift, click on this darker part right here and go to path difference. And then we could press one on the keyboard to zoom back out and see what we did there. So we now have two rings that look like they're interlocking, kind of like that. So this little part back here, this darker piece, I'm going to click that. Actually, let's ungroup this first. Ungroup object. Click off of it to deselect everything. And this little black piece right here, I'm going to get rid of that. That's uh, Just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And the final step here would be to add some kind of a shadow right here and right here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to I'm going to grab this little rim right here. I'm going to click on that and then I'll hold shift and click on the bigger piece above it. And I'll right click that and go to duplicate and go to path union and then I'll turn that black. And then I'll hold shift. Actually no, let's click off of it to deselect everything. And let's click on this lighter rim right here and hold shift and click on this darker part. And let's right click that and go to duplicate and go to path union and then hold shift and click on that black object and go to path intersection. And then we can move this off to the side a little bit, bring the opacity down a lot. So it looks like it's a, uh, a shadow and I'm just going to lower this beneath that ring. So I'm going to go here to where it says lower selection one step. I'm going to click that a few times. One, two, three, four. It looks like it took four times to get it beneath that ring. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Let's click on this lighter rim right here. And then hold shift and click on this darker piece right there. Right click, duplicate. Let's go to path, union. And we'll turn that black. And let's bring the opacity down a little bit. And let's click and drag this off to the left until it's positioned about where we want it. Maybe right about there. And then I'll we'll click on this rim right here. Hold shift, click on that darker part right there. So we have both of these selected. And we'll go to right, we'll right click it, duplicate, path, union, and then hold shift and click on that black object we just created and go to path intersection and then we will go to path break apart because it also created an object right there too that was also part of the intersection so we're going to get rid of that 
And once we've broken it apart, let's hold shift and click on this part right here to deselect it. So we just have this piece right here. So we could press delete and get rid of it. And one last final step would be to uh, let's click and drag over this whole thing and group it together. And then we'll right click this and go to duplicate. And then let's ungroup it and go to path union and turn that black and let's click this a second time to get the rotation handles and when you do that there should be this little crosshair here in the center and I'll hold control and click and drag that crosshair all the way down to the bottom of the per, uh, the perimeter right there and then I'll click this again to get back to the scaling handles and I'll grab this top arrow and just click and drag that down about this much maybe about there and then I'll click it again to get back to the rotation handles. But instead of rotating it, I'm going to grab this top arrow right here. I'm going to slide that out maybe to the right about that much. We'll go maybe that far. And then we'll lower this beneath the rings. And then we can take the opacity and drop this down a lot just to create the effect of somewhat of a shadow. So that pretty much does it for this tutorial. That's how you can create a couple of interlocking rings using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.